hosted SNL a couple of years ago. It was another milestone for the actress on her ascent from the local theater stages of Maine to the big screens of Hollywood. A combination of smarts, self-deprecating charm, and relentless work, she's got five movies out this year alone, have made Kendrick that cool, funny friend to millions of fans. Anna and I got together at the famed Broadway restaurant Sardi's to talk about her new book, Scrappy Little Nobody. Oh, it's such a nice day right now. Is your Perfect. question, am I the best person in the world? That's yes. where I was headed, really. Hey. It, huh? Sorry, I really can't talk about anything sincerely for more than it. three minutes without saying something mean about you or me. Anna Kendrick may have been a scrappy little nobody when she arrived on Broadway as a kid, but today, the 31-year-old Oscar nominee is one of the biggest somebodies in show business. She's done musicals. Indie films. Why does your mom's nurse hate you? She's married to Gwen. Gwen, you're Gwen. Wow. Mega blockbusters. I got a bag and I'm baby. I like the way you work it. I'm no diggity. I got a bag and I'm And now, she's an author, taking the wit she shows to her nearly six million Twitter followers into the pages of a new book. People love your voice on Twitter. And so do publishers, apparently. No, like you can write 140 characters that is compelling. So why not a whole book? Sure there was a genuine moment where I kept thinking, I'll like submit a chapter, and they'll be like, let's pretend that it was a mutual decision to not go forward. The book did go forward, and to talk about it, we went back to Anna's professional roots on the Great White Way. You remember walking these streets as a kid? Yeah, hustling. Yeah. Yeah, walking these streets makes it sound a lot uh, cooler than it was. <laughs> I don't remember like being 12 and being like, I own this city. And that's retroactively how I'm gonna choose to remember it. Born and raised in Portland, Maine, Kendrick found the stage early, appearing in a local production of Annie at age six. Six years later, Anna had her first professional job, playing Dinah Lord in High Society on Broadway, a role that earned her a Tony nomination at the age of 12. So this is a pretty special place for you, not just Broadway, but Sardis. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, you and I your used, dad used to come? Yeah, my uh, my dad was with me when I did uh, High Society just down the street at the St. James, and we would come here uh, every Wednesday. And I would eat super fancy food and probably not appreciate it <laughs> at 12 years old. Yeah, it was one of those opportunities that growing up in Maine, it seemed so foreign and so extraordinary. A star at a young age. Just don't call her a child star. I'll always try to make a joke about it. I'm a little bit on the defense about it because it does seem like kind of a dirty word, like child actor. Well, you turned out okay. We haven't seen the fall yet. It's coming. Is it coming? Don't worry. When was the moment where you realized out there, this could work for me. This could be a career. I'm getting enough gigs I'm still and they're waiting. going well. You know, the funny thing, and I think this happens with plenty of people, is that your break happens and you don't know it for a couple of years, because um, you know my first union exactly film ever was this little movie called Rocket Science, and nobody saw it. Were you trying to say thank you? I thought you might be stuck trying to say thank you. You're welcome. But filmmakers saw it, and then a couple years later, they were like, who was that girl from that little indie? That little indie led to a big break, an audition for Up in the Air. She landed a role alongside George Clooney and an Oscar nomination. I have to imagine, as a young actress, when you book up in the air, the idea of auditioning for a film with George Clooney has to be a little daunting. Well, when I auditioned, I it wasn't incredibly daunting because I've auditioned for a lot of movies that I just didn't get. And when my agents called me and were like, I think they're gonna make you an offer on Monday, I was like, I really don't think they are, but that's really sweet of you to say. You never wanna get married. Nope. Never want kids. Not a chance. Ever. Never. Is that so bizarre? Yes. It didn't occur to me that it was like a awards caliber film. Ew, I hate that phrase. But, um, I you like know. when you get disgusted oh, with yourself. Oh, I hate myself. <laughs> you write a little bit in the book, too, about being kind of uncomfortable in that moment. Like, you've been elevated to this place where you're on every red carpet and you're dressed up and all that. Yeah, it was like, you know, like be Charlize Theron right now. Mm, mm. <laughs> I should have been training my whole life. <laughs> okay, let's jump ahead if we can to Pitch Perfect. Yeah. Because I feel like there are all these steps that you've taken. Up in the Air was a huge one with the Oscar nomination. And then Pitch Perfect blew up so big. I know. Were you expecting that going in? 
that no, it became this like all. international phenomenon? No, I know. I was like, when I read this script, I was so expecting it to be, you know, something I'd seen before. You know, I was just hoping that like a couple of nerds would really like it. I got my ticket for the long way round. Two bottles of whiskey for the way. I was actually looking this morning, your cups, your version of the song, had like 325 million views or something on YouTube. That's so weird. Your version went to number six on the Billboard charts. I was just like, how is this just happening? Like the other people on the charts were like Miley Cyrus and Macklemore, and I was like, they're out like promoting, right. and they must be like, what <laughs> is this bull? <laughs> you know, it was like, uh, I think a real testament to the nerdery uh, that exists in the world. <laughs> We've talked about a few stories in the book. I'm just going to ask you about one last one. This here is on page 183, Anna. I'm fascinated by how you're going to answer this. Ready? Every time I talk to one of these journalists, ah! every single time you write, I picture them having sex. You know what? So. Yes. I'm, <clears throat> and I'm, okay. This isn't awkward at no, all, no, is no, it? No, 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 no. Okay. And I know you're going to have a follow-up. I know you're going to have a follow-up. I know that I say something else that undercuts this, but I promise, well, now that you brought it up, yeah. Yeah, here I am. All right. I'm thinking about it. But that's your fault. <laughs> you're really going to have to work on that answer as the book tour goes on, Anna. <laughs> I knew this was going to happen. I was prepared, and now, I know 183 is the, uh, I should watch out for that. Watch out, there's a landmine on 183. Hey, she wrote it, I'm just asking questions. Anna's book, Scrappy Little Nobody, is available on Tuesday, as you can tell, it's really funny. For you Pitch Perfect fans, Anna has announced she will be back for the th third movie in that franchise, and that's due out next summer.